What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. It's Oz. Let's get productive. So this week, I'm super excited. There's been a lot of new things coming out lately, but I'm always excited when the companies that I really enjoy that make the products that I use the most in my production come out with a new VST or a new plugin. Now, last week I talked about V Nathan and their new VST brass, and that was really dope, but it's like these guys don't stop working. They just dropped a brand new plugin, and the name of this plugin is called Tape. Now, this is basically a multi-effects tape emulation plugin. It kind of gives you that lo-fi feel, and I already know what you're gonna say, and before you say it, yes, there's a lot of plugins like that on the market already. But with me, it's never really so much about how many types of these kinds of plugins there are on the market versus whose plugins I like the best in that category. Now, the Nathan has always showed up and showed out when it comes to their plugins and their VSTs. So I was really excited to hear that they came out with a tape emulation plugin and they did not disappoint. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. V Nathan tape. Let's see what this thing is all about. So as always, I have Logicute up and this is tape. Like I said, it's by V Nate. And now one of the really cool things about tape that I noticed when I went to their website is if you're one of the first 1000 people to pick up tape, you get a free copy of their other plugin clone, which is basically a speaker emulation plugin. So it emulates all kinds of different speaker types. It's just really cool. You can go to the website and check out clone. But if you just so happen to be one of the first 1000 people to pick up tape, you will get clone for free. I believe clone on the website is selling for about $79. So being able to get it for free is a great deal. So definitely head on over to D Nathan's website and check that out. But like I said, this is tape. This is what we came here to check out. Now, just like D. Nathan's other VSTs, the UI is very user-friendly and very clean. I love the gray, I love the brown, I love the minimalistic look, just very clean and very much to the point. And that's one of the things that I love about the Nathan's plugins is that it's very easy to navigate and see what's going on on the screen. And they pack a lot of power in their plugins with a very simplistic approach. So I love that. This may look familiar. Like I said, it's a tape emulation plugin. So it gives you that tape feel. You have the cassette tape right here. You know, you have your eject button. And this is where the play and stop and rewind and fast four buttons would go, but in place of those buttons, you have different tape emulation styles. So you can click on any one of these buttons down here and you'll get a different kind of preset version of a tape emulation. And that's really cool. You can hit the eject button to, to play and the eject button to stop. So just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, I'm gonna go through some of these tape emulations right here. So right off the bat, before you even touch any of the settings over here on the right side of the plugin, you can get these different tape cassette styles and emulations just from these settings down here on the left. And that is not including the loads of presets that come with this thing. So you have your different cassette types on the bottom left, but you also have a whole bunch of presets that's loaded inside of this thing. Now, if you come over here on the right side, you're gonna see your input and your output volume indicators. You have a noise section down here, a space fader down here, an echo section, a glitch section, a drive section, a 8-bit section, so you have your little bit crusher right here, and you have a dropout section right over here. If you go over to the right, you're gonna see a widening effect, so you can widen that stereo field, and you have your mix knob right down here. Up top here, you have your settings, and over here in your settings, you can adjust the UI size. And if you click on the magnifying glass, that is going to take you over to your presets. So like I said, you have factory presets and it comes with a load of factory presets that you can go through and just kind of sift through different sounds and get a really cool tape emulation sound right off the bat. But then you can also make your own list 
of presets. I already have a preset here loaded up. It's called cold. So that's really cool. Now, if you look right down underneath the input and output value indicator, you see these I's and O's. You see these switches over here. It's like an I and an O and you can flick them up and down. That's how you turn on and off these different settings down here, these noise settings over here. So let's just turn off all of these switches right here. They're all in the off position and you can decide which setting you wanna play with first. If you click on the faders, you notice the window right here where the input volume indicator used to be will change. You see it's changing as I go, if I go to noise, it has a setting here where you can adjust the high pass and the low pass filter and you can actually sift through different types of sounds. So you can have a crackle noise, a rain noise, a street noise, TV noise, white noise, recorder, all of these different types of things. If I click on space, you can adjust the room size and the width of the, of the reverb. You can adjust the high pass and low pass filter of the reverb. If I click on the echo fader, I can adjust the timing of the echo, the feedback, again, the high pass and the low pass, and so on and so forth. If you click glitch, you have a repeat section right here and a robot section. So clicking on any one of these faders is gonna bring up extra options so you could dive a little bit deeper into the settings. So you're not just getting tape emulation effects that you could turn on and off with the fader, but you can actually dive in deeper into each one of those effects and carve them out to really fit the sound that you're going for. And you can even change and sift through different types of effects. So let's just play around with this thing a little bit and I can show you a little bit of what this thing does. So I'm gonna play this melody that I created right here. And I created this melody using uh, V. Nathan's other VST, Tape Piano 2, by the way. Another really, really dope VST, so y'all should check that one out too. But this is a melody that I made right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start messing with these different settings and we're gonna see what we can come up with. So just listen closely and see what happens as I mess around with these settings a little bit. Let's see what happens here. side where it says drops, adjusting the fader doesn't adjust the mix of that effect. Adjusting the fader with the drop setting just kind of takes you through different variations of that effect. So as you raise and lower the fader in the drop section, you get a different timing to your dropouts. So it's not going to adjust how much drop that you're introducing into your audio signal. It's not really going to give you any changes via mix, but it's just going to adjust the timing of the drops as you raise and lower the fader. So I just wanted to mention that because it could be a little confusing because it is a fader. So you might think that it's raising or lowering the mix or the, the volume of that actual effect, but it's not. So let's just jump back into it. Uh, 
I don't think I want the bit crusher on, so I'm gonna turn that off for this thing, but let's go to glitch. So this is the melody with tape turned off. And this is the melody with tape turned on. So I didn't do too much. I just introduced a little bit of noise, space, and echo into it. Like I said, you have your winding effect over here and you also have your mix knob. So now that you've been able to see how this thing works, how you can take the different settings and mold it to really get the sound that you're going for in your instrument or whatever you're using this thing on, let's go through some of the presets and see what the Nathan has loaded up for you, ready to go right out the box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just play this melody and I'm gonna just go through a few different presets just so you can hear some of the options that they have available for you. So we're gonna we're gonna click on this magnifying glass. I'm gonna go to factory and I'm gonna start off with this first one, a little dirty, and we're gonna just go through them. So here we go. And that's just some of the presets. Like I said, there's a whole bunch, so I'm not gonna go through every single one of the presets, but yeah, so you can either approach this thing from a very creative standpoint and really mold the sound the way you want it to sound, or you can go through the presets. And like I said, down in the bottom left corner of this VST, you already have your different tape emulation settings right over here loaded up that you can play around with. So you can click on any one of these tape emulation settings down here in the bottom and still make adjustments to the settings over here on the right side to really bring your thing to life. So that's really dope. Now, without wasting any more time, what I wanna do is I wanna get right into the cookup and I wanna show you guys a beat I made using the tape plugin. Now, the melody that I've been playing for you is the same melody that's in this beat and I did my adjustments to the effect. I got my piano to sound exactly the way I wanted it to sound. And so this is the beat that I made using tape. And that's it. That is the beat that I made using tape. Now, like I said, there are other tape emulation plugins on the market, but when it comes to categories like this, these category of plugins, there's always a lot of them. There's like 
when it comes to compression, there's a million compressors on the market. So it's not really so much about how many of these plugins are on the market. What it is is how you can use this specific version of this type of plugin in your workflow. If you like this company's sound and the way they approach their effects and the way their effects sound, then you might like their version of this type of plugin. I like the Nathan sound. Every VST I've ever bought from the Nathan and every plugin I've ever bought from the Nathan always has great effects. So hearing their tape emulation effects, it just sounds really good, really crispy, really clean, and I love how it sounds on my audio. So let me know in the comment section if this is something that you think you're gonna be added to your workflow. Also, let me know if there's any new plugins or VSTs that you'd like to see me bring to this channel. Leave it down below and I'll definitely check it out. As always, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you can stay notified anytime I drop a new video and I'll catch you guys on the next one.